business is tough enough, but then you roll into tax season and it's a whole nother ball game. On this week's episode, I'm gonna be giving you some tips to prep for tax season. If you've listened to the podcast for any length of time, you know that I encourage every single business owner and not just business owners, everybody really, to hire a CPA. These people are skilled in so many different areas of the tax law, and if you own a business, you need a CPA, someone that can help you sort out all the tax liabilities and tax write-offs that you could potentially be missing when you file your taxes on your own. Your accountant should work with you throughout the year, not just this specific time of year. And keep in mind too, that when you file an extension, because a lot of business owners do, they try to put it off as long as possible, don't forget that that extension costs you money. So the better prepared you are and the more efficiently you can get all your information to your accountant, the better. One of the most important things I think to touch on is that to make sure that you claim all the income that has come into your business. For some reason, some people think that the IRS isn't going to find out about extra income, but they always do. And that can lead to a whole lot of heartache. So just be upfront about it and claim all the income up front. Now keep in mind, if you didn't receive a 1099 from a client, that does not absolve you from claiming it on your tax return. Because keep in mind that the IRS has systems in place to set up those red flags if for some reason something isn't claimed, but it's reported. So again, just don't mess with it. Just report the income that you receive into your business. That way, you don't have to worry about anyone red flagging you or a potential audit that could come around the corner. I think one of the biggest reasons that small business owners hesitate in filing their taxes or wanting to file an extension is because they're not keeping adequate records throughout the year. Now, I've met a lot of business owners that keep all their receipts and everything in a shoebox. I even had somebody show me that they kept all their stuff in a garbage bag. I mean, I'm sure that the accounts out there are probably shaking their heads saying, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about and I've got stories to tell you. So you wanna make sure that you're the client that is keeping things organized. And again, like anything in life, if you do little chunks up front, when it comes for tax time, you'll be fully prepared. Some of the suggestions that I recommend to help you prep at the beginning of the year is to create a filing system with each month. So that way, when you receive those bank statements, you can just instantly file them in each month. So that way you don't even have to think about it. Doesn't get piled up on your desk with all your other paperwork. It's just a quick open the file cabinet. I've already got the file folder created and in it goes. The other thing that I do for receipts is I keep everything in an envelope that is marked with each corresponding month. So when I file those receipts in date order, then I can just put the envelope in with the bank statements and it makes things so much easier. This is a super easy way to just keep things organized. And let me tell you, in the long run, it's going to save you money. When you're more organized, that makes the process that much more streamlined. Now, if you're at a point where you are beyond that, you definitely want to hire a bookkeeper because that bookkeeper can assist you with reconciling all your bank statements, putting everything into QuickBooks for you. I've got episodes on that as well, so make sure that you check those out because streamlining this process will only bring you more money because it's less money than you have to pay your accountant. Okay, this next one, it's a big one. You want to keep your business separate from your personal. So if you are a business owner that's currently commingling funds, that means intermixing personal and business, whether it's credit cards, bank statements, whatever it is, it should be kept separate. And if you're like me and have different businesses, all those expenses should be kept separately. I find the easiest way to do that is in separate bank accounts. You have a receivable, a payable, a tax account. Those are just the bare minimum I've also got other episodes on how many accounts that you should have for each of your business, but bare minimum, you need to have those three accounts to get started. 
This just makes it so much easier. So that way, if your accountant has a question about what you paid, it's super easy to just pull up that bank statement and see the transaction right away. This will save you hours of headache, especially if you're likely to put this task off because going through personal bank statements, looking for business expenses, no wonder you don't wanna do it. That could be crazy. So if you don't currently have that set up, head down to the bank today and get that done. This is another big one that you wanna make sure that you're talking with your accountant as well as your attorney about. You've gotta make sure that you've classified your business correctly. Because if you're filing your taxes on your own, or maybe you haven't talked with an attorney about what type of business you should be in, you could be leaving a ton of money on the table. You could even be paying a ton of money that you don't need to be. That comes back to the previous thing I mentioned about talking with your accountant. You wanna make sure that this is a conversation that just doesn't happen during tax time. This is something that you're working on together all year long. Your accountant is part of your team and you wanna make sure that you are giving them all the information that they need so that way the two of you together can make an educated choice about what type of business you should be. Managing payroll is another big one. So if you've outsourced that to a company, make sure that you are double checking them. Just because they're a reputable payroll company doesn't mean that you shouldn't be double checking the numbers, making sure that everyone is getting paid their fair share, as well as the taxes being taken out. There's all sorts of different things that can happen that you might not be aware of that you're ultimately responsible for, even if you've hired a payroll company. So make sure that you're managing that payroll so that there's no surprises that get uncovered. Now keep in mind that if you've purchased maybe a vehicle, a new computer, some equipment, anything big, you might be able to depreciate that. So you wanna make sure that you've highlighted those purchases, especially if they're big ones, so that your accountant is made aware of it, so that way you're taking full advantage of all the tax rules that are available. Another really important thing to talk with your accountant about is about these big purchases. Would you be better off buying a building versus renting your current space? This is something that you wanna make sure that you're continually talking with your accountant about. And I really encourage you to talk to them all the time, not just during tax season. My accountant and I have a relationship where we're talking multiple times a month. He really is my guide on so many things because you have to remember, you don't know what you don't know. And you could accidentally fall into a hole that he might be able to prevent you from falling into had you just had a conversation with him. So things you need to do right away if you haven't done them already, especially this time of year, you need to find an accountant right away. If you haven't already, you need to open up those bank accounts and get all that set up. You also need to talk with them about what kind of entity, what are you currently, and what do you need to transition over to. These are just three simple things that you can do today that could literally change your business.